So, bienvenidos, <laughs> welcome in. Um, if you didn't get time to read the email, just a quick, quick shout out that the summer courses, uh, registration for Scottsdale summer courses is gonna happen uh, May 26th for re residents of Scottsdale, May 27th for non-Scottsdale residents. So if you live just on the other side of Phoenix or in Fountain Hills or you know whatever is outside the city limits, the first day to register is on the 27th. Somebody asked me, Marilyn, why is it the 26th of May? That's a Tuesday. Registration is always on a Monday. Well, the 25th is Memorial Day. So yeah, they won't be doing that. Uh, summer classes will run. Summer classes um, are gonna be all online. They will be all on Zoom. Um, because of course, yeah, you know. Um, and um, let's see. You know, if you have a strong opinion about times, let me know. Um, I'm assuming we'll keep this the same day. Um, but, you know, if you have a real problem with Monday or if you have a real problem with 930, you know, like, for example, I don't think it would make a huge difference if we started at 9 as opposed to 930. But I don't know how people feel about that. So if you have a strong opinion, just email me and let me know. Um, if you don't email me, I will assume I'm just going to tell them, hey, schedule it for the same time as always. And we'll, we'll go with that. <clears throat> uh, I will, of course, keep that YouTube loop going for people who can't come in on day of. Okay. Vamos a empezar. We're going to begin. <clears throat> Perdón. Um, okay. Para hoy. Today. We're going to uh, we're going to do a quick review of that homework thing out of the book. So if you need to look at the book, great. I am going to put the pages up. Uh, so I know there are one or two of you who don't have the books. So if you don't have it, no biggie. But they were two short exercises, but they span three different pages in the book. And they're using this idea of ir and a uh, and future. I think the first exercise only goes through forms of ir. The second one talks about that future. So we'll do a correction of that for like a warm up to start. Um, after that, we're going to do um, a, a really good video on how to ask questions because so often, um, you know, if you're traveling, you're going to want to ask people questions. But there are different levels of questions, so we'll talk about what that means before the video. Um, and the questions are going to bleed into a review of uh, interrogatives, and then we're going to do the pair practice on uh, interrogatives. So if you do not have, I will share this with you. If you did not yet print out, let me show you which screen. If you did not yet print out this page, or you don't even have to print it out, really. If you <clears throat> pulled it up from my, uh, I left a link in my email that I probably sent out on, I want to say it was uh, either the Monday, the day of the last session, or Tuesday. There was a link in that email, so you could pull it up via that. Or if you printed it out, if you'd like to have a piece of paper, that's cool too. Um, we can look at that. I would like to send people out into breakout rooms. That'll be the last activity we do, and it'll be in involved in using these questions. So this this page on asking questions is uh, going to be kind of the culmination, the, the top tier type of practice uh, off of everything else that we do today. Uh, okay, studying. Here we go. And if you've got questions that you want to like not shout out for whatever reason, but you want to type it in the chat box, you can go ahead and do that as well, of course. Okay, uh, 
Vamos a empezar. Vamos a empezar con un repaso. We're going to begin with a review. Just that review of ir. Uh, and we'll start with this. And I'll ask you guys to just shout out if you think you know the answer. This first one. Can everybody see that? Pueden ver? Yeah? Sí. Bien. Okay. Uh, and it starts at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to be flipping between a couple pages. The first part only asks you on the real base level just to give a form of ir to go. How do we conjugate ir for each sentence? El hombre y la mujer van. Van. Van al trabajo. Van al trabajo a las siete de la mañana. The man and the woman go or are going to work at seven in the morning. And because we've got two people, el hombre y la mujer, doing that action of going, ir, we have to conjugate it as van. Uh, número dos, nosotros vamos. 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 Vamos al cine los sábados. Uh, we go to the movie theater on Saturdays, and it means every Saturday. Uh, los sábados means on Saturdays, plural, every single one of them. Okay, está bien. Uh, vamos a ver. Let's get this bigger. Wait, momentito. It does not like when I make things bigger, too big. And then go off the screen. Let's see if we can get it a little bit bigger. Okay. Número tres. ¿Quiere usted? Va. Ir. Oh, ir. This one is hard. This is, why did they put the trick question for number three? I don't know. Yeah, we do not conjugate this. And this is something we'll really go with at a, on a, a at a different lesson because it's kind of a part of a big topic. Quiere usted ir? Do you want to go? It's got a, we actually just use that as ir, to go. We don't conjugate it. And why is that? It's because we're saying, do you want? And the main action is really want. So we only conjugate that one verb, want. And the second verb is an infinitive. Uh, what that goes to is another topic that we'll, we'll do another time, and we'll probably do it well before the summer session, really. Uh, when you've got two verbs that are both talking about the same action, like want to go. In English, we conjugate that want part, but we don't conjugate the go. It's to go. Well, they do the same thing. So... Mm -hmm. Quiere gets conjugated, but ir does not. Quiere usted ir con nosotros? Do you want to go with us? Okay. If you did not uh, get that, don't sweat it. It will come with another lesson. Cuatro, la estudiante. Uh, pa, 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 pa. La estudiante. Pa, pa, pa. pa. Va a la escuela los martes. Va a la escuela los martes. The student, and it's gal student, it just happens to be. La estudiante va. The student goes to school on Tuesdays or is going to school on Tuesdays. And when you pronounce that, well, when you write it out, va a la escuela, they're all separate words. But when people pronounce it in saying that idea, that ba, ah, those two words, they are going to run together. So how you're going to hear that is not like this. La estudiante va a la escuela. Nobody will ever say it that way. They'll say it like this. La estudiante va a la escuela. Oh, no. That ah will just get a little bit prolonged. It will, will drag it out a little bit more, that ah sound. But there isn't really going to be a distinct stop. It'll be what you would call, I know in French, a liaison. It's going to all blend together. Okay, numero cinco. Los niños quieren, oh, here's a trick. It's like numero tres. Es como numero tres. Yeah. Los niños quieren yeah. ir. Yeah. 
al circo. Circo es circus. Well, not maybe one of our high frequency words. Los niños quieren ir al circo porque quieren ver los elefantes. Ah, uh, the little kids want to go to the circus because they want to see the elephants. Okay. Seis. Yo voy. Voy. Yo voy, voy al gimnasio porque quiero hacer ejercicio. Uh, I'm going to the gym because I want to exercise. The way you say exercise, there's not a one word verb for exercise like English has. In, in Spanish, you do hacer, you do exercise, hacer ejercicio. Okay, número siete. Ah, we have to make a question. This is what you're going to see coming in later on in the lesson today. Are you going? Bus. 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 Tú and most people won't even say that word tú, by the way, that tú exists there just as a prompt so that you know what verb form to stick in the blank. Most people will say that question is, ¿Vas al campo los fines de semana? ¿Vas al campo? Do you go to the countryside? Al campo is just the outdoor regions, outside. Um, fines de semana, of course, weekend. Or weekends, here, it's plural. Número ocho, ocho, ocho. Ernesto no quiere, oh, they're doing the same thing. Ernesto no quiere ir, ir, ir a España, pero Mariana sí quiere ir. 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 Yeah, there they threw us a little loop. They're doing the, the two verb thing. And that's for another day. Okay. This was just on um, forms of ir. Hay preguntas? Do you guys have any questions before we mm -mm. get into the rest? Okay. The next part goes with the idea of ir plus a plus an infinitive. In that first exercise, you had a lot of these that had ir with an a. And the a ah really means that word to, T-O in English, meaning, you know, like in the direction of. But when we talk about ir plus a ah plus an infinitive, uh, it's like those examples you saw in numero tres, numero ocho, the idea of two verbs together. Ir plus a ah tell a plus an infinitive tells you that an action will happen like near future. Okay, and it's this exact same construction as we say in English of somebody's going to. Uh, I'm going to wash the dishes, I'm going to watch a TV show, uh, I'm going to talk to you about that later, okay? Uh, and that little word ah needs to always be there after ir to talk about near future. So we're going to take a look at the exercises that use that. Uh, and they give us an example. Can everybody see this still? Okay. I just wanted to make sure that it's still continued to share after I switched to a different page, different tab. Okay. And they give us an example. Um, we're going to complete the sentences with an appropriate form of the Spanish verb or expression. And, uh, and of course, they're going to, uh, you know, flip-flop a little. If you don't know some of these infinitives, like to sign or such, don't sweat it too much. It's a vocabulary factor. Los ejemplos. Uh, the examples. Elena va, deja, va a viajar a Portugal. Elena's going to travel. And then if we just have to need, that's only a one-verb thing. It's not a two-verb. Thing. It just becomes, ella necesita aprender el portugués. She needs to learn Portuguese. Okay. Uh, bien. Okay. Entonces, uh, número uno. ¿Dónde? Going to be. Oh, okay. Uh, we need to look at the whole context of the sentence. Where are, where's somebody going to be? Who's the somebody we're talking about? Mari y Sara. There are two people that are going to be someplace. Um, and it says, a las diez esta noche. That gives us a time limit at 10 tonight. 
So we're asking essentially, where are they going to be? Donde? Van. Van. Star. Van a estar. A estar. Van a estar. Van a estar. If somebody says that fast, it's going to sound like van a estar. Mm -hmm. Van a estar. But it is three words. Donde van a estar Mari, uh, Mari y Sara a uh, las diez. Where are they going to be? It's a estar because location. We're talking about location. Uh, and donde being the big clue there. Okay. Numero dos. Samuel going to sign. Un documento. A document. He's going to sign a document tomorrow, mañana. Va a firmar. Va a firmar. Firmar looks like firm. It means to sign. Va a firmar. Va a firmar un documento mañana. Okay, so we're talking about what he hasn't done yet, but is going to do. Mañana yo am going to finish. Voy a terminar. Voy a terminar la tarea. Voy a terminar. Uh, 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 sí, voy a terminar la tarea. Uh, could express it. Voy a acabar. Acabar. You could use that as well. Terminar uh, is just an equivalent for that. Okay. Sometimes we have synonyms like finish. To finish means the same thing as to end. Okay. Uh, so sometimes you have more than one verb in Spanish that mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, cuatro. Quien. Who's going to buy? Quien indicates who. It means one person, but it's not tú. It's just a onesie kind of single type person. So, quien va, va, va a, a comprar. comprar. Quien va a comprar. Quien va a comprar? But again, that va a will all blend together. So it'll sound like, quien va a comprar? Los tiquetes para el viaje. Who's going to buy the tickets for the trip? El viaje, the trip, the voyage, the journey. Uh, cinco, nosotros. And so we got a nice cognate with to celebrate. Nosotros. Vamos. Vamos. A. A. Celebrar. celebrar. Vamos a celebrar el cumpleaños de Ana el sábado. We're going to celebrate. Vamos a celebrar. Okay. Uh, seis. Número seis. El no going to accept. Yay, we got another nice cognate here. Going to accept. El no. Va a aceptar. Va a aceptar. But, wow, you got a lot of A's in a row, so it'll really, when somebody says it, sound like this. Él no va a aceptar. Él no va a aceptar. You won't really hear a stop, but just a little bit of a dragging out, because we've got three A ah sounds in a row. Okay. Siete. Nosotros. Going to... Oh, wait. Enjoy's a little bit of a tougher one. Okay. Nosotros... Vamos a gozar. Um, enjoy is the, well, the best translate there, uh, translation there would probably be, um, vamos a divertirnos. Oh. Divertirnos is a pretty complicated verb. It's an irregular, it does odd things. It's not irregular, of course, in the infinitive. So, uh, Vamos a divertirnos, D-I-V-E-R-T-I-R, -E and then we stick an N-O-S, a nos on the end. Um, um, why do we do that? That's what is called a reflexive verb, so we have to tag a little nos onto the end, but that's a little more complicated. You haven't gotten to that yet. Okay, uh, going to enjoy. Vamos a divertirnos el verano o uh, uh, este año this year, porque nosotros... Vamos. Vamos a Chile. Vamos a Chile. Vamos a Chile. We're going to Chile. Esta noche, esta noche yo uh, go, oh, going to cook. Voy a cocinar. Voy a cocinar. Voy a cocinar. Esta noche yo voy a cocinar. No quiero ir, ir. ir a un restaurante. I don't want to go to a restaurant. 
Uh, número nueve. ¿Quién? Ah, we got a single person again. Uh, going to turn off. Va a apagar. Va a apagar. And we've got another combination of three a uh, sounds in a row. Apagar is to turn off, like a device, an appliance something with a switch on it, okay? Uh, ¿Quién va a pagar? Is how that will sound. ¿Quién va a pagar? But separately written out, va a apagar. ¿Quién va a pagar las luces? L las luces, the lights. Muy bien. Y número 10, número 10. ¿Cómo? Van. Van. Uh, Como van, and we're, we have to look at ustedes for who's doing this action. You'll see a little bit about this when we have a question. In questions, the subject of the sentence, the person doing it, which of course determines what verb we need, the subject in a question will trail off towards the end someplace. And you see how far back ustedes is and the way this is built. Como van a pasar el día. Como van a pasar el día de acción de gracias. Día de acción de gracias is Thanksgiving. Wow. We're kind of out of season for that one. Uh, Como van a pasar. Uh, spend is a little bit of a tricky verb. Pasar with time to spend um, as in past time. If you're talking about spending money, it's not pasar anymore. If you're talking about spending money, it becomes a different verb, which is gastar. But we can't use gastar with time. Um, okay. Tienen preguntas? Do you guys have any questions about these? Si o no? No. No? No. Okay. Bien. Muy bien. Vamos a ver. Let me get out of all these little confusing tabs so I can make this a little bit more direct. Okay. Uh, fantástico. Vamos a hablar y vamos a practicar. Ustedes, ustedes van a practicar un poquito más tarde. ¿Entienden? Uh, van a practicar una combinación. Ustedes van a practicar una combinación de interrogativos, interrogatives, meaning question words, y preguntas. Uh, it's important to know what people are asking you. It's important to know how you need to ask questions. That's probably more important. Many times when you travel, uh, whether it's for work or for play, uh, you need to ask questions. And there are different ways to ask questions. We'll talk about that in a minute. But one of the most important tools you can have in your toolbox regarding questions is incorporating the words that we call interrogatives. When you uh, the police interrogate somebody, they take them in the nasty little question room. When you buy a car and they've got, oh yeah, you know the salesman's got you in the little room and he tells you he's got to go, oh, you want that price? Yeah, well, I got to go back, talk to my manager. Yeah, you're being interrogated. It's not fun. That's why nobody likes buying a car. Okay. Um, anyway, interrogativos, interrogatives is a fancy word for question words. Okay, so... What interrogatives mean is that we're asking for more information than just a yes, no. You ask somebody, um, uh, is it time for class? Yes. Has the mail been delivered? No. Okay, those kind of questions get you a yes, no answer, right? Uh, but a lot of times we need to ask for more complex information. We need to elicit, ask for, drag out an answer that's more than a yes, no answer. So the words that we're going to use for this are called interrogatives. And here comes a pretty big list. 
these are a lot of words that you're going to see later on when we get to our actual practice when you go to your breakout rooms. Uh, in English, a lot of times, um, these are what we call the who, what, when, where, why kind of words. Um, and I need to scroll up and down a little bit, right? Who, what, when, where, why? Quién? Quién? Who? There is a plural who, because as in Dr. Seuss land, the who's in Dr. Seuss books, <laughs> you know, you got the who's and you got Cindy Lou Who from the Grinch, but then you got the who's living in Whoville. Yeah, it's like that. Quien also has a plural who in Spanish. And that we make, the word quien, we make plural just by tagging on an ES to the end of quien, quienes, quienes, which can be easy to confuse with quien es. Quien es, who is, por ejemplo, quien es Boris Johnson, uh, quien es Donald Trump, quien es Doug Ducey, okay? Quien es, who is, but quien es, all one word, who more than one. Quien gets a singular verb form. So it gets the same kind of verb when you ask a question that you would use for él or ella or usted, all right? And that's pretty easy to keep straight because quien only indicates one person. But see, sometimes I wanna ask like who's coming? If I know that more than one person exists and is out there, and I wanna ask about more than one who, I need to make that a plural, quienes. And just like quien takes a singular verb, quienes will take a plural verb. So essentially quienes takes the same kind of verb that goes for ellos or ellas or ustedes. Okay, bien, fácil? Yeah. And it's pretty obvious quien is not automatically going to be yo, quien is not automatically going to be tú. Quien, we're asking about a onesie person and we don't know, that's why we're asking who. <laughs> okay, uh, quien, que, what? Que is the word we ask when we, ask when we need a, a, to define something or to identify something. Que. Uh, Por qué? is probably the hardest interrogative to use because that requires a pretty complex response. Por qué, por qué, why? For what reason, essentially, por qué? Por qué? Uh, uh, oh, I, I is there because, I is actually not an interrogative, perdón. <laughs> I just means there is, there are, I is in there because it's in with my, my group of signs that I typically have in the room. Those of you who have been in my class before have seen I, but we'll skip over that for now. Uh, el próximo, next one. Donde? Donde? Where? And I'm sorry, this guy, I'm going to see if I can make this bigger. Ah, uh, uh, mejor, better. You may hear donde used in a couple different combinations. Donde, where. But if I use donde with a verb of motion like ir, ir, to go, obviously is a verb of motion, then that donde word morphs a little bit to a donde. We just tag the a. You know, you had to say voy a la oficina, voy al supermercado. That little a that's always tagged on after ir, it in a question gets tagged on to the front of the donde interrogative, a donde, to where, literally. You may also hear it used as de donde, from where. De can mean of or from. Um, if you wanna ask where are you from, the de moves in front of the donde. De donde eres, de donde eres, where are you from? Uh, so, you may hear donde morph into some different word combinations like a donde or de donde. Uh, can we get this to go back? Ay, que no. Momentito. Okay. A ver. Y claro que esto no ayuda a gente. 
course, this doesn't help, so I gotta go back to get my screen back. Guy, it's gonna make me go through the long, awful process. Vocabulario interrogativos. Donde esta? Donde esta? Ay, que no, momentito. Ah, aquí. Stringing me right in the face. Okay, donde? Ah, and it shifted everything to a different position. Ah, uh, because it goes by order. Okay. We're going to look at this next one next to a la izquierda, a la izquierda to the left, a la izquierda de donde. Uh, ¿Cuántos? ¿Cuántos asks for how many? ¿Cuántos huevos hay en una docena? How many eggs are there in a dozen? ¿Cuántos? How many? ¿Cuántos has to be a plural form? But when I knock the S off of cuantos, it just gets shortened to cuanto. And in that case, it's how much. Okay. Por ejemplo, entonces, ¿cuánto cuesta? ¿Cuánto cuesta un, cuánto cuesta un carro Mercedes? How much does a Mercedes car cost? ¿Cuánto cuesta? How much does it cost? We want an amount. Not a number in a group, but an amount with cuanto. Whereas cuantos asks for a total number out of a group, that form a group. Okay. Proximo, next. Cuando? Cuando? When? Okay, we're asking for a time period. Could be anything from a year to a day to a date on a calendar. Uh, depende, depends. Uh, another word we have, which is pretty close and sometimes confusing with K or confused with K is cual. Cual means which or what. It asks you to pick something out of a group. Uh, there are times actually in the translation between English and Spanish where uh, actually where we might use can cual kind of get reversed in Spanish, but that's a thing for another lesson. Just know that cual or cuales, the plural form of it means which, and it means you're picking something out of a group, uh, a smaller subset out of a larger group. So in other words, que, what asks you to identify or tag a name onto something give a definition, whereas cual asks you to pick something out of a group. Uh, then we've got como, como, how, como estas, how are you? Como van las cosas, how are things going? Uh, y por fin, finally, a que hora, a que hora is a more specific interrogative phrase, and it's not, you'll notice just a single word, it's three. More specific than cuando. Cuando asks when, but a que hora gets more down to the nitty gritty of at what time. You know, somebody's not asking for a day or a year or a month, but an actual time frame. A las tres, a las cinco, a las, uh, a las nueve de la mañana, uh, al mediodía, at noon, we're asking for something more specific. Okay, está bien. Sí. Vale, bien. Okay. Um, all these things are the tools in your toolbox that you need when you need to ask for really specific information. Let's get a couple of examples and then you'll see in the video how that's going to roll. Por ejemplo, let's go all the way back to quién. ¿Quién, quién, es, ¿Quién es nuestro camarero? Who is our waiter? Which guy out of all these guys? ¿Quién es? Uh, ¿Qué? ¿Qué? ¿Qué es? ¿Qué es una piñata? What's a piñata? Okay. Uh, ¿Por qué? Why? ¿Por qué estudiamos español? Why are we studying Spanish? Um, ¿Dónde? ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está? 
¿Dónde está tu esposo? Where's your husband? ¿Dónde está tu esposa? Where's your wife? Uh, ¿Cuántos años tienes? How old are you? Uh, ¿Cuántos? ¿Cuántos? ¿Cuánta? Oh, sometimes it turns into a feminine form. ¿Cuántas mascotas tienes? How many pets do you have? So, cuantos can change into a feminine form, just so you know. You won't have to put that into practice yet today. Uh, ¿Cuánto cuesta? ¿Cuánto cuesta? ¿Cuánto cuesta un galón de leche? How much does a gallon of milk cost? Uh, ¿A qué hora? Or, perdón, ¿cuándo? ¿Cuándo, cuándo, cuándo? ¿Cuándo, cuándo sale el autobús? When is the bus leaving? Uh, ¿Cuál es tu cumpleaños? What's your birthday? Which date on that calendar would you pick out as the one that's your birthday? ¿Cuál es tu cumpleaños? Uh, ¿Cómo sabes eso? How do you know that? ¿A qué hora? ¿A qué hora es nuestro vuelo? ¿A qué hora es nuestro vuelo? What time is our flight? So those are all examples of how you would integrate those interrogatives into questions. Hey Marilyn? Sí, dime. Uh, yes, I have a question about uh, going back to Kien. Okay. I had, I had made a note a while back about whose, like whose house is that? And I had written de Kien. Ah, buena pregunta, good question. Uh, es muy buena pregunta. Kian can have uh, little prepositions stuck in front of it, just like donde does. De quien means of whom. In other words, we would, we would translate at that as whose, W-H-O-S-E, whose with no apostrophe. <laughs> uh, de quien, okay, por ejemplo, for example, and this happens because if you want to tell who something belongs to or to whom something belongs, if I really use proper English, um, the only way to do that is to say of and name the person. So, de quien, de quien, de quien es este libro? De quien es este libro? Of whom is the... Ah, whose book is it? <laughs> yeah, whose book is it? That's how we would naturally ask that question. Uh, who does it belong to? It's of the person, meaning it belongs to that person. Uh, ooh, de quien es esta taza de café? Whose coffee cup is it? Okay. En una oficina, in an office, de quien Es esta computadora. Whose computer is this? If you're somebody supervising, right? Uh, de quien es este archivo? Whose file is this? You want to know whose file it is before you start working on it. So de quien, whose? You could also hear a quien. Uh, a quien conoces en, en este cuarto? Who do you know in this room? Uh, so sometimes a uh, comes in front of uh, quien, sometimes de. Buena pregunta, good question. Tienen más preguntas? Do you guys have more questions about interrogatives? Oh no. We do sometimes combine them with some other shorter words. And usually when we combine them, we stick in front of the interrogative what we call a preposition. Little shorty words like a, de, con. Con, meaning with. Con quien. Con quien vas. With whom are you going? Okay. Another combination. So you're right. Some of these words, especially things like donde uh, or quien, will have other little prepositions that go in combination. Okay. Bien. Uh, a ver. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lo, lo que vamos a hacer, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a video that steps us through 
different levels or different ways to ask questions. Because whenever we travel or just speak with somebody conversationally, questions are really the life but a lot of conversations. You know, you want to know some sort of information to help yourself, to know about something about that other person, to show interest in someone or what they're doing. And there are different levels of questions. Some questions will happen as uh, you just need a yes or a no answer. And uh, for a yes, no answer, you're going to see through the video that the word order of the question in Spanish is set up as the verb comes first. So the verb will move to the very front of the sentence. A yes, no question will start generally with a verb. In English, we use the word do or does for that. And when you think about it, if you break it apart, if you were going to explain that to somebody who was learning English, it's kind of tough. Here's why. Let's think of how we ask a question that's a yes, no question. Do you know how to get to the bank? Do you know? What does that word do in English really mean? Huh? Does he, does he have money? Does he have money on him today? Does he have any money? Um, do you want something to drink? Do... There's no connection and meaning between do and want. There's no connection in, you know, there's no connection between the word do and the action of drink, do and the action of no. It's just that in English, when we ask these kind of questions, we typically will use that word do as a lead off. It's a lead off. And it signals that you're going to ask a question. Um, does he want a menu? Okay. So do or does will lead off a question very, very typically in many situations with English. But in Spanish, we will lead off with the verb, the conjugated form of the verb. There's also a second way to ask a yes, no question. And that's what something called, a, um, I think he's, well, I've always known them as tag words on the end. And he'll explain that. It's pretty easy to know. And then sometimes a yes, no question doesn't cut it. If you need to know what time a tour starts, if you need to know where to go to buy a ticket, if you need to know how much it costs to buy a uh, uh, a, a, a metro ticket, a ticket to get on the subway, you can't ask a yes, no question. You need to have these interrogatives. So what he's going to show you is that typically a yes, no question will start with a verb in Spanish. And if we need to ask something more specific with an interrogative, the interrogative comes first and it comes in front of that verb. So it essentially just moves that verb back a little ways. We lead off with that interrogative. But he shows you lots of really good examples. So we're going to see if I can get my YouTube to work. I had a little Chrome and YouTube problem last week. It was interesting. Everybody could hear the YouTube, but they couldn't see anything happening. And I discovered that Chrome doesn't want to talk because of an update to my double screen setup. Yay! Because we want to make life really, really complicated. Yeah. Ah, uh, a ver. Let's see if we can get.
this to go. I've got to have this here. Okay. Um, okay. Bear with me here. This is all in the... Can everybody see the uh, YouTube screen here? Pueden ver? Can you see? Sí. Pueden ver. Magnifico. Okay. Vamos a ver. Uh, we are not going to use closed captions because you don't need this. He's, he's assuming people don't know very much Spanish. So you won't have somebody giving the whole lesson in Spanish. Things that's really important to know how to do in Spanish, and in any language for that matter, is how to ask a question. Right? The worst thing would be if you really needed a glass of water and it was a hot day and you couldn't say water, you just had to point. I mean, we want you to do more than just point. All right, and there are three categories of questions, basically. Are there more? Probably. But this is all we need to look at today. Yes, no questions. We're working with question words. And we're working with question or tags. All right, well, let's start with yes, no questions. So if I had, if I said this. Comes mucho. All right, if you heard my intonation or the tone of my voice trailed off there. And that means you eat a lot. I eat a lot. And if I wanted to change this to a question and say, do you eat a lot? And that's a yes, no question because the answer when you come back is either yes or no. All I have to do is take that same, that same statement. I am going to add an upside down question mark and a right side up question mark but then instead of my intonation going down my intonation will go up comes mucho now i'm going to over enunciate in this video but you'll figure out how much you have to to say that so let's look at the first one comes mucho you could hear how that went down comes mucho comes mucho mucho see how that goes up well that turns that into a question do you eat a lot and you would say no. No como mucho. So step one, yes, no questions. All you do, put a question mark on it and make your intonation go up. Follow your same structure as if you were writing a sentence. Now, if we wanted to put our subject pronoun in here, and generally in Spanish, we, uh, we avoid our subject pronouns. They're redundant. You would put that subject pronoun after the verb. Comes tu mucho? But honestly, I would just leave it out. You don't need to say it. So the second way we have to ask questions is to use question tags. And we use these, and we have two examples down here of verdad and no. When you are pretty sure you know the answer to the question that you're asking, you can use these. So let's go back to that original example and I said comes mucho. That's a yes no question. But if I was pretty sure I could just say you eat a lot. Right? Comes mucho, verdad? So in this one again it goes down like normal and then verdad? It goes up. And so that tag it's just asking us to confirm the statement that we just had. We could use no also. So if I'm pretty sure that you speak Spanish, but, but you know, I, I want to confirm that. I could say, hablas español. No. So you speak Spanish, right? Now I have the word no, which makes it look like no, you don't, but it means yes, you do, which means no, you don't, but I already knew you do. So, right, mm, yeah, get it? Okay, good. So, 
first way. Asking questions, yes, no, intonation goes up. Second way, using verdad or no at the end of a statement. A third way that we can ask questions is with interrogatives. And interrogatives are those question words that you learn back in, I don't know, probably first, second, or third grade. Who, what, where, when, why, how, with whom, to where, things like that. So how do we use these? Well, let's look at a couple. Let's look at K. So if I wanted to say, what do you want to eat? The first thing that we do when we're writing a question in Spanish with an interrogative is we're going to start with an upside down question mark. And we will ask K. And all of our interrogatives, or our question words, carry a written accent. Do you want to eat? ¿Qué quieres comer? And you would answer, oh, well, I don't know. Quiero comer dos tacos. So we use them pretty much the same way that we do in English. The difference being, we have an upside down question mark that starts the question. Or if we were to look at another example, or maybe a question that you've already seen, how are you? Well, how is como? Well, how do we say how are you? Well, we start with an upside down question mark, como. And let's go ahead and take this off because we're going to add to the question. Como estás? And you would come back and say, estoy bien. A few that we need to look at, we have cual and cuales, quien and quienes, which have both the singular, quien, and they have quienes, the plural form. Qual, the singular form, and cuales, the plural form, depending on what it is you're asking about. And then with cuanto and cuantas, we have the singular form, the plural form, the masculine, and the feminine form, and you have to change those based on what you're working with. One final one that we should look at is the question word qual. We use qual, which is translated as what or which, when we have a, a group of things, like let's say there are four gifts here, I don't know, I guess I wouldn't want any of these gifts, this wrapping paper is not very nice, and you're asking someone to select from a finite group, you would say qual prefieres. Which do you prefer? But if I didn't give you that selection, if I didn't say, hey, there are four here, and I just said, hey, what do you want? What do you prefer? Then I would use K. So if it's open-ended, what do you want? But if I said, hey, of the four things right here, what do you want? What do you prefer? Then I'm going to use Qual, which can mean what or which. When we're asking questions in Spanish, there are a bunch of different ways to do it. We have our yes-no questions where our intonation goes up. We have our question words that you just have to memorize. And then we have our question tags. When you pretty much know the answer, you just want to confirm. ¿Verdad? So, go out and try a few. Ask some people some questions. Practice. It's the only way you're going to master this. Let me know how it goes. Suerte. Okay. He always ends with suerte. <laughs> uh, suerte, which just means good luck. Uh, okay. Uh, lo que vamos a hacer, what we're going to do next, is we're going to send you off into a break room. Um, and we're going to practice with these questions. And I think I'm going to send you off. Actually, normally this is done in twosies. But I'm going to assume, <clears throat> because of just feedback I had from folks, that 
uh, you know, maybe you might be more comfortable in a group of three doing this particular activity because uh, uh, asking and answering questions is something you're going to want to kind of bounce ideas off each other or maybe not be super sure of what you want to do with these. So it might be more comfortable for you to be in groups of three. Or if, for example, somebody doesn't have the written form. Um, I, I'm going to try to figure out a better way to divide these. Those of you who, who don't know or who, who have been with me before, these are the pages that we fold down one side. And, you know, normally the A people only look at the A side of the questions and the B people only look at the B side. So we fold these vertically. Uh, those of you who have not been with me before, you won't be familiar with that. I'm going to try to annotate this and see. The, the A person always starts off. Uh, the A person always starts off, but the directions are the same for each side, the A side and the B side. And as I send you off to work in threes, you'll have to kind of uh, uh, go with the flow a little bit because normally this is a two-person exercise, but kind of uh, um, seg in and out of, of um, you know, give each person a turn. Uh, the A person is going to start asking this question. ¿Qué tipo de música escuchas? ¿Qué tipo de música escuchas? What type of music do you listen to? Tipo just means type, kind. Uh, ¿Qué tipo de música escuchas? So one of you in the group is going to ask that question. And on the B side, all you see is escucha y contesta, listen and answer. So ideally, if we were doing this face to face, the B person, you would just be listening to this person saying it. And, and I, I, I'll have to figure out a different way to set this up with Zoom so that truly you don't see the answer. Because unless you printed this out, you can't do the true thing of, you know, hide the question. So uh, I'm the B person. I only hear the question. Ideally, I don't see it. ¿Qué tipo de música escuchas? And I know escuchas is asking, do you listen to? So I need to say, I listen to. And when I've got the question escuchas, I have to answer with a yo. Because I'm asking, what do you listen to? Not what does your friend listen to or what are those kids listening to? What do you listen to? And when I answer that, I need to change that escuchas verb in my answer into a yo verb. Uh, escucho la música rock. I listen to rock music. Escucho, uh, escucho la música jazz. Escucho, uh, escucho la música country western, because that's what they would say. Uh, so you have to escucho, and then you're going to add some kind of category. Escucho la música mexicana. Escucho la música norteña. I listen to norteña. It's a type of Mexican music. Um, okay, so you go from A, gets asked the question. B has, should ideally just listen and answer it. And then when that B person is done answering, ah, now B person, you look below that, escucha y contesta, B person, you're going to ask the next question. A que hora prendes? En prendes is turn on, switch on. A que hora prendes a televisión? Uh, the A person only hears that. Prendes is asking tú, you, okay? Uh, you need to answer with a, a yo form, prendo. Prendo la televisión a las siete, a las nueve. If you don't at all, no prendo la televisión. I don't turn on the TV, okay? Then we flip-flop. Oh, the question goes back to the A side. ¿Quién vende buen café? 
who sells good coffee as opposed to, wow, that other place makes a lousy cup of joe. Kim Bembe, who sells? Well, you've got to stick in a name of a cafe, un restaurante, un cafe. You've got to stick in a name of some establishment, right? Some place that sells really good coffee. And of course, that's going to vary. But that one place sells, vende buen café, a good cup of coffee. Uh, we're going to flip back here to donde viven tus primos. Donde viven tus primos. Now I'm not asking you about yourself. Uh, who am I asking about in this question? Donde viven tus primos? Your cousins. The cousins, right. Not where do you live. Because then it would be donde vives, where do you live? Or donde vive usted? This is donde viven tus primos. Where do your cousins live? So in the first few, uh, in the first two examples, I went to, from a tu question to a yo and an answer. And the third question is, what does this person do? The question stay, the verb stays the same in the question and the answer. Who sells this person or this establishment sells? In this question, where do your cousins live? My cousins live. So you'll notice in three and in the fourth question, the underlined verb in the answer matches the verb you hear in the question because I'm not switching between a you and an I, right? If I'm asking about my cousins, when I, when I answer that question, I'm still talking about my cousins. So the verb is still gonna be bebe. Our next question is gonna be, donde trabajas? Where do you work? I've got to switch to a yo verb when I answer this. A tu verb question gets a yo verb answer. Mm -hmm. Okay? If I don't have a tu verb question, then I don't switch into yo format. Okay? Where do you work? I work. Trajo. En. In. And now you name a place, right? Um, Where does your kid work? Now I'm not asking you about yourself, right? Where does your kid work? You would answer, my kid works in, and then you would name the place. Okay, we're gonna switch back to the side, the next question. Donde metes las llaves, las llaves keys? Donde metes, where do you put? Metes is to put something inside of something else. Donde metes las llaves? And maybe you put your keys in your pocket, bolsillo. Maybe you put it in a purse, in a bolsa. Maybe you throw them on the table, in la mesa, right? You're going to pick a place where you typically stick your keys. <laughs> Something you put your keys inside of or on top of, right? Donde metes? And we're listening for the verb meto in the answer. So you notice in all these... The question uses one verb, and sometimes the verb you're listening for in the answer changes to a different form. Here it changes to a yo form. Uh, we're going to switch back down and take a look at all of our questions here. We borrar. Wow, I got to figure out how to erase. Another fun thing I got to learn to do with my nifty zip. Nifty, nifty, zoom now. Um, okay. Uh, ooh, I hope I've got the right. Wee, ay, 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 ay. Yeah, make this. Okay. Vale. Cuando viajas, uh, cuando, cuando viajas con tu familia? Cuando viajas con, con tu familia is our next question. When, uh, when do you travel with your family? Maybe you do it in a certain month. Maybe you do it in a certain season. Cuando viajas, a tu question, viajas, I need a viajo. I travel. A yo answer in the question. 
I switch back to this side for the next question. ¿Qué lenguas comprendes bien? ¿Qué lenguas? Which languages? What languages do you understand well? Comprendo bien, comprendo bien. I understand. And you name off whatever languages you speak well. ¿Qué bebes en un restaurante con tus amigos? Ah, uh, uy, ay, 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 ay. Trying to get my... Ah, for some reason it's not letting me go back to my, my drawing here. Okay. Uh, ¿Qué bebes en el restaurante con tus amigos? What do you drink at a restaurant? ¿Qué bebes? ¿Qué bebes? ¿Qué bebes is asking tú? We need a yo in the answer. Bebo. And now you need to name a thing. Bebo agua, bebo vino, bebo una cerveza, whatever it is that you drink. Cuando, we're going to flip over to the B side here. Cuando regresas a casa todos los días. When do you come back home? Not to the house, but home, a casa, every day. And well now, oh, this is so irrelevant now. We're in ho at home all the time. Oh, well. Cuando regresas? When do you come back? When do you return? We need a, a yo answer to a two question. Regreso. Okay. We're going to flip back to the, yo, uh, the A side. Cuando descansas un poco? When do you rest a little bit? And we want a time of day or morning or evening or whenever. Cuando descansas? We need to hear a yo form in the answer because we're asking with a tu verb. We need a yo verb for the answer, descanso, and a time. We're going to flip back to the B side. ¿Qué lees durante el verano? What are you reading during the summer? And again, we're asking a tu question. We need a yo answer. Leo. And now I'm going to identify. Okay? Asks for an identification. Leo, and maybe you're going to name the book. You don't need to translate it. Maybe it'll just be the newspaper, el periódico. No importa. Uh, we're going to flip back to the A side. ¿Quién vive al lado? Al lado de. Al lado de means next to on the side up. ¿Quién vive al lado de tu casa? ¿Quién vive al lado de tu apartamento? Maybe you live in an apartment, not a house. Who lives next to you? You'll name a person. Ah, now I'm not asking, ¿Vives tú? ¿Quién vive? Who lives? I got to name a onesie person. I'm going to name somebody and stick a vive. Next, I've got instead of, wow, instead of a quien, who, I've got a plural, quienes. Quienes en tu casa viven fuera de Phoenix? Or quienes en tu familia? Quienes en tu familia viven fuera de Phoenix? Who in your family lives outside of, fuera de, outside of Phoenix? ¿Quiénes en tu familia? And I mean, you probably have more than one family member that lives outside of Phoenix. Mi hermana y, mi hermana y mis primos viven fuera de Phoenix. Por ejemplo, okay? Back to the A side. Porque abres a las ventanas en tu oficina. Abro las ventanas porque. Abro, abro las ventanas porque. I open the windows porque. Porque hace calor. Porque es verano. Porque, porque necesito aire. Because I need air. Something. And the very last one. ¿A dónde vas? ¿A dónde vas? Where are you going? ¿A dónde vas mañana? Voy a, and you need to name a place. Sayim, are we good with that so far? Okay. I don't think I can keep the share on when I send you into break rooms. This is something I need to investigate next in um, Zoom. I, I think I am not allowed to do a share at the same time. I might fiddle with that, but boy, I hope I don't blip everybody out by fiddling around with that. Um, let me
let me just see if I can play with that a little teeny tiny bit. Let me see if I can play with that. And no, I can't. Well, the answer to that is no. Okay. So uh, we're going to have to say go with the flow on that. I'm going to send you out into rooms. And I'm going to try to pop into rooms to see if you have questions going on. So ask each other some questions. It's going to break you out into just random rooms. And I'm going to see if I can pop into various rooms as we go along. I'm probably going to give this maybe 10 minutes at least, maybe a little longer, because it'll take about that much. I'm just looking at the clock here so I can figure out my time limits. Uh, and I'll try to pop in um, to see how you're doing or what kind of questions you might have. Okay, so I mean, it'll give you a countdown when we come to the end of breakout room. It'll tell you like with 30, 60 seconds to go that you've got a minute to finish up. Exciting? Anybody got a question? Okay. Ah, uh, bien, vamos. Okay, I've got to tell how many rooms. I would put you in groups of twos, but I think we're going to make it threes. I think one, one group of you, I think, is going to get into a group of two. Yeah, a couple of you. But I'll try to seg into that room maybe more. Okay. You will have to hit the join button, folks, to get into the room. Make sure you hit the join button. Okay, Scott, I still yucky. I'm here, Scott, because I'm not sure Claire is going to hit the join button yet. Okay, you can hear me? I see. Sí. Okay. Perfectamente, perfectamente. I'm going to start the ball rolling. I'm going to ask the first question. I don't know if you had a chance to pull this, this file up. Can you actually see it or not? Not on my screen. Okay, I mean then you know what? I'm going to hang with you here. Um, and what I will do is I will just ask you questions and see how close you can come with answering it. And I'll help coach you through whatever you have problems with, okay? ¿Qué música escuchas, Scott? ¿Qué música escuchas? What music did I listen to? Yo oiga, yo escucho, escucho. Escucho, I listen to. Muchas diferentes uh, músicas. Okay. Uh, jazz y, ¿cómo se dice rock and roll? Música rock. Y música de rap. Oh, música de rap. En, mi niño les gusta mucho. ¿Quién, quién? Ah, bueno, okay, vale. Wow, I'm going to go off script because you don't have the script anyway. Uh, <laughs> ¿quién, es, ¿Quién es tu cantante favorito de rap? Uh, possibly, uh, senior, uh, Dr. Dre. Ah, oh, Dr. Dre. Muy bien. Okay. Pero <laughs> Eora, Eora, uh, mi hijos is, uh, uh, Drake, the rapper, uh, uh Del Drake. Oh, el famoso Drake. Sí, es, es, es canadiense. Estoy canadiense. Es, ca es canadiense. Sí. Drake is canadiense. Pero vive en Canadá, Drake? Sí, sí. Oh, vive aquí en Estados Unidos. En ciudad, uh, Toronto. Oh, vive en Toronto. Me gusta Toronto. Ok, es está bien. Es uh, nuestro uh, grande uh, ciudad. Es no más grande entonces Toronto en Canadá. Ah, sí. Me gusta es Canadá. Como, oh, es como uh, uh, New York City en Estados Unidos. Ah, bien. Ok. Vale. Paso. Mucho diferente gente. Diferentes culturas es mucho en uh, Toronto. Uh, oh, me uh, parece, uh, seems to me. Yo vivo, vive, yo vivo en, uh, en Canadá. No, no, ahora más, más diferentes culturas, pero uh, cuando estoy, yo, yo fui joven, solamente uh, Euro, europeo gente, Germans, 
you know, e the, uh, the native, uh, the native Canadians. Canadienses. Canadienses, uh, the, the native. Oh, indigenous, yeah. really, like literally. Yeah. yeah. Native, uh, in indigenous. Cultura is, is mas culturas in, let's say, the, the past, uh, atrás, let's say, 20, 30 años. Si. Sí. Mas immigraciones. Ah, immigrantes. Immigrantes, sí. Hay mas immigrantes. Entonces, ah... Uh, Pero es, Toronto es, es una ciudad... Ah, yeah. Toronto es una ciudad cosmopolita, ¿no? Sí, sí. Mucho, grande, ya. Yeah. Es en y, y Montreal. Oh, Montreal. Este y Montreal. Pero Montreal es, 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 no, es no grande ciudad. Pero es cosmopolitan. Sí. Uh, yo en yo el, visité en Montreal en, en septiembre. En septiembre. Y me gusta mucho Montreal. O sí. Mo Montreal. Montreal, <laughs> sí, ya. En Canadá es muy diferente. Es, uh, you know, especial cultura. No, es no problema para mí, you know. Estoy no en francés, pero mi madre fue uh, francés. Uh, habla, uh, hablas uh, uh, francés, mi, mi madre. Habla francés tu madre. Sí, pero mi no, porque en, es, you know, en años viejo. ¿Por qué papa, no? Papa, ¿Por qué no hablas francés? Mi papá dice no, es you know, estúpido, pero es diferente ahora. <laughs> Okay. Entonces, cuando, cuando eras joven, cuando eras niño, me, no, me... No, en, uh, no enseñaba mucho el francés. No, no, pero mi, mi, uh, mi, mi hijos habla español perfecto. Ah. Porque ella, ella uh, vive, vive en, en, uh, en Cabo. Cabo San Lucas. Oh, Cabo San Lucas. Sí. Tengo negocios con mi esposa en, en, uh, en, en Cabo. Cabo. Oh. Y ahora es no, es no gente, uh, pero oh, es excelente. En, en San Jose, es norte, <coughs> solamente 30, 30 kilómetros uh, entre Cabo y uh, San Jose del Cabo. Ah, ok. Entonces, uh, tus negocios de, uh, dependen de la, a los turistas. Sí, sí, turista, ya, yeah, sí. Entonces, ahora eh, es difícil. Pasamos sí. por una época muy difícil sí. porque no <laughs> se posible. puede viajar. Sí, well, el, en el, el, el verano es posible, es no, es no, no negocios, es no business. Es, es cerrado. Oh, no, ah, entonces, ¿normalmente durante el verano no hay negocio? Sí, sí. No, para mí sí, porque mi edificio es en la playa. Ah. En la playa y de, uh, ¿cómo se dice? Uh, de, uh, the surf, the break, the break to surf. Para um, los pues, Ok, surf, surfear es to surf en, sí. en el océano. Para, para mí, en el océano. No. Estoy um, ocupado más o menos todos los años. Ok. Entonces, la falta de turistas no es por coronavirus. No, pero es, es de, de coronavirus en, uh, en Cabo y ahora es malo. Oh, sí. Sí. De verdad. Gente, de, de doctores, te, uh, tengas. El problema del coronavirus. Ah. Sí, es, no, es, es, el problema es, es, you know, es, es no bueno. I mean, you know, the, the, no, la, the, la, la gente de mexicanas es no, no dinero. Es uh, no necesario de the, the vacaciones. The entonces, no, no tiene, pues aquí no importa si tienes dinero o no tienes dinero. No hay, no hay pruebas. There are no tests. No. Sí, uh, uh, ok. A veces, los ricos, como los jugadores de básquetbol, pueden pagar y obtener una prueba de coronavirus. Pero para nosotros, si, si tienes dinero, todavía no te 
puedes uh, obtener una the, prueba. Yeah, the, the problema es en the, the grandes ciudades de México. I mean, there's, Pero there's el, no el problema north, existe en, en México north. ahora igual que aquí. Yeah. Sí. Uy. Espero que, que no sea tan peor como en the, Nueva the, York. Pero uh, dice uh, no, no, no trabajo. No hay trabajo. Uh, hasta, uh, I think, junio 1. Ah, hasta ju el primero de junio. Ya, yeah. yeah, no, 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 no negocios, no. So, no entonces, uh, Scott, han cerrado, han cerrado los negocios, claro, have they closed? Hasta el primero. Hasta el primero. Uh, aquí sí. no sabemos si van a abrir, si van a abrir los negocios aquí en junio, no sabemos. Aquí es lo en mismo, Arizona. Lo mismo aquí, I mean, es, no, you know, the hotels. Los, oh, los hoteles, sí. no. No hay nadie, no hay da, nadie en los hoteles, no hay nadie okay. volando. Yeah. Pues, ok, de vez en cuando una persona usa no, el no, no corte el pelo. <laughs> <laughs> no se puede cortarse el pelo, no. No, uh, yo, le, uh, yo le corto el pelo a mi esposo oh, que está okay. trabajando. Mi esposo trabaja, mi esposo sí trabaja arriba. Porque mi esposo tiene su oficina arriba, en el sí. segundo piso de nuestra casa. Y él, pues, él siempre, siempre trabaja en, en in, casa. En tu casa, so es no diferente no. para ti. Ahora no, no, es, no es nada diferente de, de un día normal aquí. Porque él es programador de software. Y entonces, uh, su compañía está en, uh, uh, ¿dónde está? Está en uh, el norte de Carolina, en Raleigh. Ok. Y él siempre trabaja. Raleigh, I would... Sí, mi, uh, mi, mi niño es de uh, uh, competición de surf. De oh. surfer. Ah. Oh. Sí, en el, el nivel es... es es, muy alto. Es muy alto. Sí. Es de, experto. Yeah. Yeah. So es knows, experto yeah. en surfear. <laughs> en México, en, uh, you know, of course. <laughs> en uh, California, en Perú, en Canadá, diferentes mm. países en el mundo. Es muy yeah. atrevido. He is daring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gana muchos concursos, does he win contests? Yeah, yeah. He's in the yeah. Canada's na the national team. So he he's travels. Got... Yeah, he's high level. He's It... been to world championships. Viaja, okay. Uh, okay, and viaja a not... Peru, viaja a Hawaii, me imagino, no? Sí, sí, no, no, no Hawaii. El próximo uh, este año posible. Hay concursos de surfear en, en la Florida. Es diferente. En, uh, he's a, like a coach because he's on a national team now. You keep okay. it in national, so okay. they'll okay. have that. But no, there's filming, and no, it's it's muy serio. Ah, muy serio. Uh, yeah. Okay. Entonces es un negocio para él. Sí, es, es no normalmente uh, aquí, pero el coronavirus es, es so, uh, mi, mi ah. niño Boston es aquí. Ah. Es con la escuela porque mi, mi hijos, la escuela es uh, in, uh, in México, fue de uh, computer door. Ok. Y regular school, ambos, en la mañana. <coughs> Por la mañana tiene en de México. Okay. Different agendas. En de en la tarde en mi casa en el computer door. Ah, and, uh, trabaja en la computadora. Eh? De uh, español de en uh, México and then the the uh, the course or program in Estados Unidos. Ah, the, okay. The, from grado Wait. grado tres hasta grado uh, seis, ambos. Ah. So, mi, mi hijos habla perfecto en uh, español. There's no problema. 
No, no hay ningún problema, entonces. El problema es para papá. Pues, para los niños es más fácil. Cuando, sí. Sí. cuando escuchan, uh, cuando escuchan, sí, quieren yeah. comprender más naturalmente. Y entonces eh, es mucho más fácil. Y tienen la habilidad de, de aprender muy rápidamente. Pero para Ellos, nosotros es más difícil. Tienen solamente cuatro y seis y siete uh, años ah. cuando, cuando uh, vivo en, uh, Entonces, en, en, en México. Y ahora es 16, you know, 14 y, y uh, 16, 17 años. Ah, ok, está bien. 17, ah, bien. 14, 14 and get ready, drum roll. Three. <laughs> <laughs> y tres. Muy bien. Ten, tengo a uh, little niño. Es lo, es lo, lo mismo a uh, esposa. Ok. <laughs> Entonces, so, tengo hijos... cuatro, cuatro uh, hijos. Ah, uh, cuatro. Wow. Sí, sí. Yo tengo dos, dos niños, solamente dos. Dos niños, uh, dos niñas. Ah. Mi último, the, mi último dos. Where uh, the, the niñas. Las menores, the youngest? Yeah, is uh, solamente, is, is, uh, is tres años, pero junio siete, ella es cuatro. Tiene cuatro, so tiene cuatro, cuatro años en... And then, ah. and 14, 16, 17, 17. Wow, wow. Yeah. okay. Hay gran diferencia entre los mayores... Yeah. Y sí. los menores. Yes. Es una aventura. La vida es una aventura. <laughs> <laughs> Pero es excelente. It's, you know, how do you say? It keeps me young. Tienes, tienes buena actitud frente a, <laughs> a tener muchos hijos. Es buena cosa. Sí. <laughs> ok. Entonces, tus, tus hijos o tus hijas ahora van contigo a cabo. Sí, ¿verdad? sí, sí. Pero, pero Boston es, es, uh, es no problema ahora uh, with himself. Con, uh, usted, uh, how do you say himself? With himself, how would I say that? Con, consigo, with himself. Consigo is no, is, you know, he can travel on his own more now. Ah, pu oh, okay. Puede, puede viajar solo. Yeah. Puede sí. viajar solo. Sí. sí. Eso Boston, es... Mucho, mucho amigos uh, con la surf. Es no okay. problema en, 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 en uh, ellos casas. En sus casas. En, en sus casas. En, es, en es lo mismo en, en mi casa en, en México o condos. Tengo negocios de condos. So ah. No, you know? In Mexico, okay, in, in their home. Oh, here they'll stay in home. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a juntos, it's, it's so, close group. So, oh, ah, close groups. The, the Son the amigos muy... Menos nacionales, so the, 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 the national equipaje, uh, they're, they're more, más sí. cerca. Okay, entonces son muy unidos. Muy Uni unido, yeah. unidos. Unidos, they're close. Sí. So amigos the, muy unidos. In, in, in California, in Mexico, in ah, you know, entonces uh, el mundo es diferente uh, amigos. Compart just, comparten sí. un apartamento con frecuencia, sí. ¿no? Sí. Este año por uh, uh, más o menos cinco semanas, uno, uno mes, a uh, Boston uh, 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 fue, you know, solamente alone con ah. uh, a coach. Maestro. Ok. Coach, coach se dice coach. entrenador. Entren, entrenador. 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 A trainer. Entrenador. En, uh, en, uh, sí. En Costa Rica. Wow. Uh, Costa Rica. Oh. Qué exótico. I love that. Me gusta Costa Rica mucho. Es, es un lugar muy, muy, muy bonito. Y depende mucho en, en el uh, ecoturismo. Sí. Entonces, me imagino que es difícil ahora porque los norteamericanos no pueden viajar tan fácilmente como antes y uh, pues como es, es como es 
por todas partes. All es, mucho, es mucho uh, en el norte, en la uh, Tamarindo zona, la zona de Tamarindo, sí. muchos uh, americanos. Sí. Hay, hay, hay una comunidad bastante grande de norte, norteamericanos que viven en Costa Rica y uh, también hay algunas ciudades en México. Tengo dos estudiantes que querían vivir en México, en uh, Querétaro, uh, Querétaro y uh, ahora uh, por causa del, del virus están de regreso aquí otra vez en Estados Unidos. Porque fue, fue difícil pagar por, yeah. por todo en México siendo norteamericanos. Yes. Ah, así es la vida. Ah. Y, y otra, the, uh, the difference between the, the, the do dollar y the peso, Puh. y ahora oh. es grande. From the oh, sí. Yeah, 20, 24 de, per de uno. 24, 24 to 1. 24 pesos? Yeah, to 1. A I think un it's dollar. Under, over 20, like it's really like it's gone ¿Qué, weak. ¿Qué es normalmente? And it's weak. If you're American, it's your dollar's going to take you far now there. Ah. Normalmente, ¿cuánto vale el normalmente, dólar? Normalmente, más o menos, 18 to 1. Oh, uh, y ahora 24. Uy, ay. So, a big difference. Yeah, big difference. Okay. Wow. Ok. Y vivimos en... En, en, en Canadá. Ah. Ah, con, pues... uh, con la A7. En la, la A7 es... Uf, yeah, es no, sí. no, no, no mari. Vivimos en no. tiempos interesantes. We live in interesting times. Vivimos oh, en man. tiempos interesantes. No son buenos, pero son interesantes. <laughs> Muy. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to need to seg back into the group yes. and take questions from folks. So I'm going to leave this right now, Scott. Yeah. Fue un placer. It was a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to return to main session. Okay. Those who are here, everybody back here. Can you guys hear me? Pueden? Yes. Sí. Pueden oír. Okay. Magnifico. Uh, I had to seg into Scott. I was going to, uh, he was left by his lonesome, so I had to make sure that I, he had a partner. Um, <laughs> bien. Uh, so I did not get a chance to pop into your different groups. I do want to know, quiero saber, yo quiero saber si ustedes tienen preguntas para mí. Preguntas de dificultades o cómo se dice algo o lo que sea, whatever it may be. 
Can I put on Do you guys have some questions? I do not. No, I think we did. I think we did well. I think we just need more of this language practice amongst ourselves. Yeah, and and we'll. Um, I'm going to try to think of uh, a way for you to do this easier in breakout rooms. Um, I have to think a little creatively and see what other features I've got on this to uh, let you do that without having to share a screen, you know, uh, and, and the solution may be that I just ask you to print something out beforehand, or it may be that I just break things down into some smaller tasks, but I have to think a little bit creatively about that this coming week. Uh, so that you can do some more practice. I think it'll uh, vale la pena. It's worth the effort. Vale la pena practicar más. I think it's worth it to for us to go into the breakout rooms a little bit more and to um, do some different um, types of questions or maybe have you guys play around a little bit with formulating questions to ask each other, mm -hmm. which is always a helpful thing to do with conversation. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll kind of tag that as one of our skills to really work on next week. Okay. See, si, bien? See. Si. Uh, Marilyn? Oh. Uh, uh, we did have one question um, okay. on one of ours. Um, it's the one that on the A side, it's que bebes en el restaurante con tus amigos. Si, si. When we answered that, would we say con mi amigos? Or since the amigos is plural, would it be mis amigos? Con mis amigos. Con mis amigos. Okay. Con mis amigos, with my friends. Okay. Right. Me, uh, there are only two forms of me. Me does not go into a feminine masculine thing, but it does go into a singular and plural. So, uh, es, es mi café. Es café, pero son, uy, momentito. Pero, por ejemplo, son, son mis libros. Son mis libros, pero es... Mi taza de café. Mm -hmm. Así es. Mi and mis. And similarly, tú and tus. And his or her will become su or sus. And we only go into the masculine feminine thing when we go into a word like our. But again, that's for a different day. Okay. <laughs> Bien. Thank okay. you. Más preguntas. Oh, I think you've, you've got a question. Maddie, I'm going to try to unmute you, or can you unmute yourself? Oh, Maddie. Okay. There yeah. we go. Yeah. I have a question. Um, sí. Cuando descansas un poco, um, do I say estoy descansa a la tarde or en la tarde? Or I, I'm not sure. Ah, okay. Uh, there are a couple ways you can say that. So let me kind of write some of these in the chat box so that you can both see it and, and hear it. And I'm gonna put, wow, I gotta put my accent marks keyboard on. Uh, okay, um, I can, if I wanna say I, I do this regular, regularly. Oi, momentito, donde esta? Oh, because I didn't get my cursor in the box. Here we go. I can express that as, as descanso, I rest, or estoy descansando. I can use either one of these, but there's a little difference in what they mean. Descanso is going to indicate usually, it can mean I'm doing it right now, it can mean I usually do this, like as a habit, descanso. But the estoy descansando is going to have a connotation of it's happening right no. now. As I'm speaking, literally. Mm -hmm. So we usually don't use estoy descansando, that descansando is what we call like an ing, mm -hmm. English mm -hmm. form. Mm -hmm. But generally in Spanish, that Ando, estoy descansando is generally saved for what you're really doing in present time as you're speaking, as a general rule. Mm -hmm. So if I want to talk about, let's say, quiero hablar de mis hábitos. I want to talk about my 
habits, what I normally do. Lo que hago no normalmente, what I normally do. Descanso, I can express that as uh, descanso uh, por la mañana, or I can uh, use a different little itty bitty uh, preposition and say that descanso en la mañana. O descanso uh, por la noche, right? Uh, descanso en la noche. Uh, mm. Prefiero, prefiero por. I prefer oh. por with a time of day. It's just what comes more naturally to me, but you can express it as en la noche. Uh, por la noche for me just comes a little more naturally. It's what I hear people using more, mm -hmm. but you can use en, certainly. Por la noche, en la noche, all at. Does okay. that help? Ayuda. Yeah, sure. Magnifico. Thank you. De Thank nada. You. Okay. I, uh, Tienen más preguntas? Anybody have more questions? Tienen más preguntas or no? No. No? Okay. La semana que viene, okay, our next coming week, we're going to take this uh, a little step further. We'll do some more different kinds of practice with different kinds of questions. Uh, I'll probably have some set questions and some things for you to formulate is so that you form your own questions. Um, so what you may want to do to prepare is make sure you go back over those interrogative uh, words and uh, make sure that you've got those down pretty well. And uh, we'll have you practicing both asking and answering some questions in smaller groups. Está bien. Mm -hmm. if, if you need any kind of uh, prompts, I will email those to you probably by the latest Thursday of this week in an email. I'll send, you know, if you need some kind of a file to work off of, I will send you that via, via email. Está bien? Yeah. Magnifico, yeah. muy bien. Fue un placer, it was a pleasure. Fue un placer. Y Gracias. nos vemos, nos vemos el lunes, ¿no? Gracias. Gracias. De nada. De nada. Que tengan buen, buena semana. Have a good week. Thank you. Hasta luego.